You said 88. something ridiculous. Oh, 88. is it high Hyundai or is it Hyundai? Because I don't it's know. Hyundai. Look at the spelling. No. It's high Hyundai. It's Hyundai. No, but, yeah, but it's pronounced Hyundai. Yeah. It's no Hyundai. Hyundai. No, it's pronounced let's, Hyundai. Let's watch a commercial in Korean and see how they pronounce no, it. No, let's watch it no. in English, the greatest English language known in the United man. States. <laughs> Hyundai. 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 Like... Hello, my friends. Thank you for joining us for the PEPCAC podcast, a weekly information security show featuring some all around good people. It is week 48 of 2022. I'm Chris Louie, and hope everyone had an awesome Thanksgiving here in the U.S. With me, I have the hot dad who spent last, last week giving thanks that the punishment was not more severe when he ruined the ending of The Sixth Sense to countless moviegoers. Man, if you got the beef, I got the A1. Come and bring it. I'm not scared of you guys. A1 as an A1 steak sauce? Yeah. <laughs> who actually puts that on their meat? <laughs> Well, I, I heard that you do because you don't know how to barbecue and just everything is just hot garbage over there in the Louis household. So it's the only thing you guys can do to, to make up for it. Well, can... well, I, th- I think you're still the one that goes to scissors right through your steaks. <laughs> Not me. I can't have a barbecue, so that's <laughs> cast iron all day, baby. All right. And we have Glenn Medina, who is back from spending much needed time with his family. Everyone. Yeah. Kids are all home and getting ready to celebrate the Thanksgiving holidays and hopefully catch some really good deals on uh, on Black Friday. Oh, I have a closing the loop on the Black Friday thing. Remember, so a couple why don't you save back, that until was, the closing the loop segment, son Brian? Son of a gun. Son of a gun. <laughs> Come on, Brian. Now, get with it. We've only been doing like, this like... Now closing the loop. I'm like, whatever, dude. <laughs> We've only been doing this like 80-something <laughs> times. No guess this week. Today alone, I think we rescheduled this recording like four times, so that's not conducive of having a guest on. But combined, we have decades of information security experience and are here not just to educate, but to entertain. We've got four awesome stories for you this week, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Brief announcements. I started a Mastodon account since I was seeing a slow but steady decline in InfoSec content on Twitter. So find me. I'm C. Louis at infosec.exchange. You guys enjoyed Mastodon yet? No. What is that? It's a dog. Giant it's dog. dog. It's like a horse. <laughs> Human sized turds. It's crazy. It's the oh decentralized Twitter alternative. Oh. Check me out. Today, we're going to open the show with some closing loop feedback about the strange saga of FTX that gets weirder by the day an unusual collaboration in the IT space, open up with World Cup Fever. We'll kick things off with the TikTok Kia Challenge. Next, a controversial bug bounty program for hacked cryptocurrency DeFi platforms. For our third topic, there's a movement to move the Red Cross into digital territory. And finally, we'll close with our Black Friday and Cyber Monday wish lists. So closing the loop this week, since Brian tried to jump the gun earlier, I'll let you lead it off this week, Brian. Nope, you'll just have to wait for next week. I already forgot. (laughs) All right, closing the loop this week. That $600 million that went missing after FTX filed for bankruptcy is believed to have been transferred to the Bahamas under duress of the Bahamian government. What? So it didn't go to Alameda? They don't think so. So... It, there's two conflicting news stories. This story came out that SBF had to transfer it to the Bohemian regulators, and now they're taking the money, it's sort of a quid pro quo in exchange of not arresting him on site in the Bahamas. But then Chain Analysis did an analysis of the coins, and they think it was stolen by a threat actor that's trying to cash him out. So we don't really know what the case is. And it depends if you believe the news or if you believe in this forensic Chain Analysis I believe in the forensics. But there, yeah, but there's rumors though that that he's not even in the Bahamas; that he may have fled down to South America, right? Yeah. So that was the other story. His plane flew down to Argentina, but they claim he was not on the plane. The only the plane went to Argentina. The rumor was he was supposed to try to flee to Dubai, which is a non extradition country with the U.S. So, where in the world he is, I don't know. 
Sounds like a bit of Fantasy Island there. The plane, the plane. A little bit of Carmen San Diego. Yeah. Is six hundred million enough to survive in Dubai? I would think so. Okay. I don't know how rich they are over there. That's a lot of money, Brian. <laughs> or as Brian would say, that's a lot of scratch. That is true. That's, that's a lot of money. It's a lot, a lot of Pokemon cards for you. All I know is we should have uh, been clued in on this a long time ago. Anytime someone under the age of 30 is in charge of billions of dollars, that should just be a red flag. Giant red flag. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. Like dating someone from China. That's a big old red flag. <laughs> Quit talking about my family that way, Brian. <laughs> what did I say that was at all negative about your family? Not really closing the out of the loop topic, but I didn't want to dedicate an entire segment to it. But apparently Microsoft did a collaboration with the cookie Oreo, and now there are new Oreo emojis in Microsoft Teams. Anytime a customer forces me to use the dumpster fire that is Microsoft Teams, I always mention that fun fact to them because if I have to use Teams, you're getting an Oreo emoji. So what's your beef with with uh, Teams? It's awful. It's awful. Why do you even have to ask? Teams is awful. No, specifically, like, what is it, though? Like, for me, I, like, my computer feels like it's about to take off, right? Like, you just hear the fan cooking. It's hotter in my office. It never remembers audio settings. Down. So I use an external okay. mic, and I use an external speaker. But usually, the default setting is use system mic, use system speakers. It never remembers that. I have to set it every time. What about your virtual I, background? I have I actually never go on camera when I'm on Teams. So the, the customers that force me to use Teams are non-camera customers. I actually turn my camera on on one of the means. Just that's just what we're taught. You know, turn on your camera, it makes it more personal. And said, Chris, please turn off your camera. Since everyone else has their camera off, please turn yours off too. So I got scolded for oh, wow. turning my camera on one time. <laughs> Don't you dare be that's social. Yeah. You weirdo. Yeah, how dare you? All right, this section will also act as our annual warning to our listeners that with Black Friday and Cyber Monday, Monday coming up, there will be an increasing number of phishing emails impersonating popular retail brands. Don't get scammed this year and think before you click. Glenn, do you want to do your closing the loop item that you sent to the group chat earlier? Yeah, so I think I talked about uh, you know my membership at Planet Fitness and the... Uh, the fact that uh, you know there's there's no uh, there's no what's the word there's no um, <laughs> there's no uh, no judgment at uh, Planet Fitness right so it's, it's kind of great um, that you also don't get a lot of people there that, that are you know wearing tank tops and flip flops and working out in jean shorts Brian and uh, so you know max and weight out and and making all kinds of noise while they're lifting and that there's a, this thing actually called the the lunk alarm where if you're making a bunch of noise or you're dropping weights or you're making anything sounding excessive, the alarm goes off. So it's pretty cool. I like it. Nice. Now you figured out what, what sets it off. So now you know how to avoid it. Yeah, I was trying to figure out, because there's a couple people that still make noise. I'm just trying to figure out what the register is, what the uh, how much noise do you have to make in order to kick that thing off. like decibel or pitch or something. Yeah, yeah. All right, for our opening topic, unless Brian miraculously remembered what he was going to say earlier. No, you guys interrupted me. I forgot now. For our opening topic, the World oh, Cup kicked off Brian. in Cotter last week. Actually, yesterday at the time of this recording, and the universal reaction, including my wife, was, why on earth are they playing in Cotter? I'm actually surprised more people don't know about this, that FIFA and the World Cup Commission are extremely corrupt. Cotter spent hundreds of millions of dollars in bribes to FIFA officials, and they also spent about $380 million on offensive hacking operations to hack into the email accounts of influential people within FIFA to find out how they could sway the commission's selection to the country of Cotter. So here's the World Cup by the numbers. The entire event cost the country of Cotter over $200 billion, so that's B, billion with a B, which comes out to $35 million 
per minute of played soccer. The country has 300,000 residents, which is about half the, of the U.S. state of Delaware, but also houses about 200 million or 2 million migrants. And speaking of immigrants, hundreds of thousands of migrant workers were brought in and worked under what people are calling slave conditions, and it's estimated that thousands of them died in the construction leading up to the World Cup. Sweet Jesus. How the, I? What is the World Cup? I don't even know. Is it soccer? Yeah, every four years, the best teams in the world. $200 billion? Stop. We're in the it's wrong... football. It, <laughs> no. It's football. We're in the wrong <laughs> business, boys. $200 billion? There's got to be an easy way we could have at least each grab two or three million for ourselves. Yeah. A lot of it was How the heck like, is it doing that? like construction, infrastructure, hotels, the stadiums. I'm sure. They had to overhaul the airport, the soccer ball, the soccer balls. That was at least yeah. $6. Okay. Yeah. $200 billion. But still, the, with, but still like that $380 million in offensive hacking operations. That's a little bit more than half of the 600 million Missing from FTX. Yeah. <laughs> the heck. Yeah. That's insane. There's, I, a, there's a story linked into the show notes that a apparently a guy that works at Deloitte in India, he ran this hacker for hire business as a side hustle. And that hacker for hire business was the one that helped get into the email accounts of these FIFA officials. So he was able to manage a full time job at Deloitte and at night run this hacker for hire organization on the side. Good for him. Two hundred billion. That's a lot of scratch. What, what do you think that was? Do you, do you think that was equipment, hardware, software, or just a lot of consulting? It's a lot of consulting. A lot of consulting. Yeah. Which I bet this guy yeah. pocketed a lot because I'm sure offensive hacking in India it doesn't cost that much. Which is sort of why they offshore it there. Yeah. Did you guys see that? There's actually a Netflix uh, Netflix show on this called FIFA Uncovered. No, I'll have no. to check that I'm one out. Watch yeah. right now. Be right back. Yeah. Let's yeah. go into the I'm severe watching. corruption of the organization. Yeah. I, 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 like I said, I'm just, I, I was just, you mentioned this and I was like, hey, there's a movie on this because right now I'm watching Pepsi, Where's My Jet? So, and I know we had talked about that in the past. So I'm, I'm in the middle of that. And after this, I'm going to go watch FIFA Uncovered. So you know, put it on my playlist. All right. We'll talk about it on the next week's pod. That'll be our homework for Thanksgiving. There you go. All right. So literally nobody cares about this. The U.S. men's tied Wales one to one. And we're just going to move right on to our first topic. Yeah, no one cares. <laughs> yeah, no one cares until it's women's soccer. I love women's soccer. Definitely. I heard they're not doing too well either. Definitely, definitely women. Yeah, well, they've got their own <laughs> <laughs> But at least they're not crying on the ground like babies like the men's soccer yeah. team. So Jeez. Shots fired. All right. For our first topic, we're going to take some less serious InfoSec news this week. Since we just came off Thanksgiving, we should be thankful that the internet did not melt down over the holiday. We all know that. Well, if, if it did happen, then I'll come in here and I'll do the record scratch and I'll, I'll put in a segment that said I was wrong about that. Boom. Love your, love your tenacity. Go on. <laughs> I'm pretty plugged into automobile infosec, so I'm, I'm not really sure how I missed this one until I read a headline that four people were killed doing the TikTok Kia challenge. What is the, t- the Kia challenge? It's a viral trend growing on right now where people post videos encouraging people to steal Kia and Hyundai cars to do dangerous stunts in them or drive at very high speeds. So why Kia or Hyundai specifically? Well, the executives at those companies have their heads so far up their rears that they did not think it would be worthwhile to install an immobilizer in their cars to save a few bucks. That means that anyone who watches a five-minute video online could figure out how to hotwire a Kia or a Hyundai automobile with nothing more than a USB phone charging cable. The first car I personally bought with my own money was a 2003 Honda Civic, and even that car already had an immobilizer in it. An immobilizer ensures that the car's actual key is in the ignition before the car will start. There's a tiny RFID chip on the key that communicates with the car's ECU to tell it to start the car or not. We've had this technology for over 20 years, and I don't know why Kia and Hyundai don't use it other than purely for cost reasons. 
it can't even be that expensive in the first place. Like that is that's shocking. And to watch the video on how to do it, it's even cooler. I mean, scarier. <laughs> so, speaking from experience, there, Chris, Brian. So <laughs> Kia and Hyundai, well, since I saw this, I, yeah, I went and looked it up. That's yeah. true. Yeah. So yeah. Kia and Hyundai, they, they're offering like these retro fit kits for the Immobilizer, and they're like two hundred bucks, I think. I guess sure if they saw it in the factory, it'd be like twenty bucks. But now, now they have to rip apart the ignition everything it's like the whole thing's 200 bucks to not have your car stolen there's a slew of videos on, that was. on uh well I, they're probably all tiktok videos but it's on youtube you can watch it and people recovering their vehicles and just how absolutely just dis- destroyed they are so four people dying i get it they're probably out there hot riding and you know trying to see how far they can but, jump this bad boy but, but but wait a minute guys whose fault is this is this the four kids that stole the car and then because it didn't have an immobilizer, it's Kia's fault? Or or is this really just plain idiocracy here because there's a TikTok challenge out there that you can do this, but necessarily uh, these, should these not just... do this, right? Chris, say something. Sibilance. All right. I don't hear Glenn. Oh, yeah. We don't hear you again. It's always Glenn. It's always Glenn. It's always Awkward. Glenn. Awkward. Can you guys hear me? Now we can hear you. Now we can hear you. Your hold audio on, sucks, hold on, hold but on, hold on. we hear you. Hold on. Now can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Hello, hello? Okay. Sorry about that. But yeah. I guess what I'm trying... Let's go back to this. Wait, wait. Who's Since you're old enough, here? I'm putting you in a home. It's such a <laughs> nuisance. <laughs> it was a scratch my head. <laughs> Who's at fault here? Is it the four people that got killed trying to steal a car when they shouldn't have? Or is it Kia's fault for not having a immobilizer? Well, it's the kid's fault for dying. Like you just, you know, what's this, the saying? Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Yep. It's Kia's fault for yeah. being, you know, cost savings around here. I mean, I would be pretty pissed if a couple of my vehicles just up and disappeared one night. I'd get it, but oh well. You know, with used yeah. car prices at where it's at right now, would it, well, it would be a bust maybe? There, there was this thing. You remember when airbags first came out? There was a bunch of kids trying to test out how how much airbags really worked, right? Oh yeah, Do you remember that? That was a while ago. That when they would put it under yeah. someone's chair and try to launch somebody. Yeah. No, they would steal someone's car and then drive into a wall to see if an <laughs> airbag would really deploy. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> if they sur- if they die, that's a Darwin Award. If they survive, that's what Brian said: play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Yeah, it's not like there's exactly. hundreds of hours of empirical data that the NTHSA has done to show that airbags actually work. Yeah. I'm sorry, well, if that was my kid that stole a vehicle, like my four kids, they teamed up together, master plan, stole a vehicle, crashed it and died, I wouldn't go to their funeral. I'd just be so <laughs> upset with them. Yeah, I didn't know them, guys. Obviously, I'm not the father. I need you have to turn it down. I think, I think your wife would have told to be totally against you. <laughs> she would beg to differ, Brian. Uh, uh, speaking of stuff that gets me in trouble, the other day when I called my son a jerk, He's not really a jerk. I just say everyone's a jerk all the time, but I caught a bunch of heat for that one. Thank you, Chris, for posting that on the Pepcac podcast on Instagram. Why did you catch it? You did do a jerk move. Yeah, but, you know, apparently jerk is a four-letter word that I shouldn't use when describing our children. All right. So you got a talking to you, and this is your public apology. Yes. my son, And actually, he's not a jerk. I just say it all the time. I just think it's a funny thing that no one's really said since caught you. the eighth grade, right? He just caught you. He just caught you listening to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. All right. For our second topic, this will be our cryptocurrency story of the week. Due to the increasing number of cryptocurrency decentralized finance or DeFi platforms getting hacked, the industry is kicking around a new idea of allowing attackers to keep 5% of the stolen funds or $5 million, whichever is greater. This type of program is a bug bounty on steroids program and could make these DeFi platforms even a bigger target. On the one hand, these exchanges keep getting hit and keep losing hundreds of millions of dollars, similar to what was happening in the enterprise software vendors before they instituted formal bug 
bounty programs. And, you know, sometimes these platforms get hit by the likes of North Korea, so they're directly funding their nuclear research programs. On the other hand, this encourages more hacking, but may force developers to push good code, knowing that they have an even, even bigger target on their back. So the 5 or 5 program, good for the crypto world? Isn't uh, 5 or 5, wasn't it like the, the Arby's slogan there for a while? I think it's 5, 4, no, it's five, five. Taka. 5 for 5, we got five, the meats. 5, 4 or 5. Yeah, this is yeah. 5 or is 5. Arby's? Yeah. Arby's 5 for 5 sale, I guarantee it. Yeah. All right, anyways, we're talking about DeFi there. platforms getting hacked. Uh, I don't know the answer to this. What do you think, Glenn? You're not paying attention either. What are your thoughts, <laughs> I <don't> Chris? <laughs> I, I, I was conflicted on it because it encourages people to hack. It's like, oh, if I can get into the system, I can legally keep 5% of whatever I steal. But companies should be building their systems to withstand things like that. And if they're getting hit for the likes of hundreds or, you know, Axe Infinity was hit for $600 million that if they can keep 5% of that, they get 95% of it back. I think it's worth it for them that they only lose 5% if they get hacked. But that's if the, that uh, the attacker agrees to the 5 million, right? Correct. Yes. They, they, yeah. I mean, it's like, uh, you're still trusting a thief to give it back to you for five million, versus what they think they get their owed, which is the six hundred million. Yes, yeah, right? so there's which is what they're asking for. If you guys have seen the movie Heat, there's a not the bank robbery scene, but when they steal the bear bonds from the armored car, they steal the bonds and they said we can flip them on the open market for forty cents on the dollar, or we can sell it back to the guy we stole it from. He's insured for a hundred percent, but he'll pay sixty cents on the dollar. So there's a calculated risk that the hacker has to take because yes i have 600 million dollars worth of stolen money but there is a microscope on wherever that money goes and it's getting harder and harder to wash and to clean that money with the likes of tornado cash getting sanctioned you might have 600 million crypto but you can't really do anything with that unless china starts accepting that for coal payments or iran starts accepting that for nuclear technology they have to clean it somehow but we're, we're talking about crypto, right? Uh, the whole point of crypto was that it's supposed to be non-traceable, right? I, I, I think I, I'm the, kind of... the proper term is less traceable. Less traceable, yeah. 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 yeah, because you could do things. You could do it in Tornado Cash. You can launder. You could flip it for Ether, for Bitcoin, wash it that way. In, in the end, companies like Chainalysis do a really good job of following the money. So it's not as fungible as you thought it was yeah but overall for the for the industry i think it would be good because the likes of axe infinity if they could benefit from somebody else getting whacked and then they learn about some kind of security vulnerability inside their platform that way then they can tighten up security at a lower cost and then keep the north koreans out of their system all i know is this the whole crypto story is similar to gab Gabby Petito's boyfriend. There's there's gaps in their story, for sure. Like it's supposed to be the world's greatest thing, but the, it is not. I'll tell you what. Yeah, like I yearn for the early days of crypto. I guess there was not the early early days. Is it literally impossible to buy crypto in the in the early early days? You had to buy like Chris, Second Life. You guys coins. don't see this for the listening. Chris, he's like, I yearn for the early days. <laughs> he's got love eyes right now. Like he's. He, oh my gosh, he does yearn for it. He yearns for it bad. Go on, so, Mr. I think Sexy. He's a, he's, he, he's a Maka guy. Make crypto great, great again. again. Maka, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think when it peaked around the first time, around 20,000, that was probably the best time because it was relatively easy to get then. You could like go to Coinbase, attach to your checking account, and you, could, and you could buy it. When people started getting creative with it for with Celsius, with FTX, with Alameda, taking out these high-risk loans, making these stupid stable coins and this tether that they just print unlimited money, when people started to abuse it, I think that's when it that's where we went wrong. Agreed. I also think there's something to be said about the names of coins and people falling victim to it. Like when you're like, oh, there's Bitcoin. Well, that doesn't sound like anything I want. Stable coin. That sounds stable. You know what I mean? I think people actually are that dumb. It's part marketing. It's part marketing, part, yeah, part crypto. 
I'm still a believer in it. I, I did when it hit sixty five thousand. I didn't think that was sustainable. We were proven right. I think the prices have to come back down. We have to restart on building the fundamentals again. Not this crazy flash loans leveraged out to heck, paying twenty percent a year. That's everybody knew that was not sustainable. All right, for our third topic, the International Red Cross is proposing a digital standard of its signature Red Cross logo. The proposed Ooh, digital emblem would signal to anyone trying to enter or attack these computer systems that the systems and data they hold are protected from harm under international humanitarian law in times of armed conflict. If you ever watch a war movie or a TV show, the Red Cross is an internationally recognized symbol that they are non-combatants and that they should not be fired upon. Just like a truck or a hospital would have this symbol in a war zone as a sign to not drone them, bro. A digital Red Cross would allow governments and hackers alike to recognize which resources should be spared from attack. Now, you might think that criminals, by definition, do not follow the law, so this would be a worthless gesture. However, we have seen Ransomware as a service gangs have their own code of ethics that they will not attack hospitals, schools, or healthcare. So this could be a step in the right direction. I think it would former get a military used. guy here. Former military guy here. If I, you know, we all talked about this. You know, my peers and I, when we were about all in the military, like, do you really think no one's going to shoot us with a red, you know, cross on our shoulders? And like, the answer was no. We're combatants. So, yeah. You know, you, I, I was so afraid you were going to take this down a different road. Like, yeah, anytime we saw a Red Cross, might as well be the target. Just, <laughs> just open up and unload. Like, oh, you can't, war target crimes. Practice. Don't be, you can't get in trouble, Glenn. Yeah. Don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're yeah, good. I, I, I think it's too easily taken advantage of here. I think people will take advantage of this easily. I think you're, yeah, 50 people, 50% of the people are going to be morally right. And the other 50% are just no morals at all. And will do whatever they can to take advantage of the situation. So I'm with each. I think like private companies will start putting this red cross up in hopes that they don't get their systems ransomed. This just in Twitter has a red cross for your verified users. (laughs) I mean, look, look, look at some of the breaches out there, right? I mean, some of the medical institutions that are out there that are getting attacked. So I, I doubt that this is take go, going to help them. Right. Yeah. There's So the big one in the news right now is MetaBank. So us in the U.S. might not know too much about it. But the story in fast forward mode, Meta, MetaBank is a, it is a private healthcare organization out in Australia. I think like 9 million records got uh, hacked, leaked. Their systems got encrypted and MetaBank refused to pay the ransom. And the first file that the hackers uploaded to their leak site was a file called like abortions.txt or abortions.csv and had like all the personal details of anyone who's ever gotten an abortion that was you know covered by this insurance company so when you talk about no ethics or moral that's that's a pretty low blow <laughs> that is a low blow jeez man but, yeah, could, could they have released a document that says penis enlargements? Yeah, it's like dot text. You, you couldn't go for like <laughs> cancer or you know, as bad as that is. No, the first thing they released was th- this file about abortions. Oh, gosh. All right. On the topic of iPhones for the, our last topic, and it will be a rotating topic every week. This week, we're going to talk about what's on your Black Friday or Cyber Monday shopping list. For the record, Brian tried to rickroll a bunch of us at the our company with a tiny URL saying it was his Christmas wish list, but he was unsuccessful, at least with me, because I check these URLs before clicking on them. Know the source, right? What 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 did you actually expect? And maybe it really was your Amazon wish list. I mean you're pretty popular here. People might send you unsolicited gifts. Oh damn it. I should do that now. Good idea. Be right back. We just ruined everyone. Now everyone's gonna think it's a Rick roll. 50 oh, yeah, 50 right on? i actually had a couple people click on it and con- and and tell me that they were that i got them so you not being one of them of course all right what's on your wish list this year guys oh it's funny i i i asked my kids for an iWatch, the new one and uh, no such the thing my daughter i watch does not exist <laughs> uh, whatever, like the, whatever the apple watch 
<laughs> yeah, the Apple Watch. <laughs> and it was the, the Ultra, right? And my kids go, that's like $800. We can't afford that. And I said, I'll tell you what, just buy it, slap my name on it, and then give it to me. <laughs> so, <laughs> buy it with my credit card is what I told them. So. Oh, Glenn, and my so daughter kind of looked at me and it was like, ugh. <laughs> So. so if you see that $900 charge hit your card, you know what you're getting for Christmas this year. Won't hurt my feelings. So, Yeah, remember everyone, uh, Glenn is notified anytime there's a charge of above one cent on his credit card. <laughs> Nothing gets by <laughs> the great firewall of Glenn. That's right. The great paywall of Glenn. I don't know. I'm just hoping I can afford like bread and water, you know, feed my family next year. So we'll see. It's true. That inflation's no joke. Maybe get some gas and not yeah. cry at the pump is again. There... <laughs> is there anything else you guys wanted, Chris? What did you want? Well, I'm saving up to get the new iPhone. So here's a tip slash life hack, I guess. During Black Friday, Best Buy and Target have this deal where you buy a $100 Apple gift card. And Apple gift cards are good for everything now. It's good for iTunes. It's good for hardware, whatever. And that's the only time they never go on sale, but a lot of these companies, these retails will give you a bonus card with it. So that's when I stock up on these hundred dollar gift cards to buy the next iPhone because the iPhones never go on sale because I never switch my wireless provider. And this is the only way to get basically like the equivalent of 15% off. So that's what I usually stock up on are these Apple gift cards that give you a $15 bonus card to the retailer. Fun fact. Chris told us about this little life hack last year at like 11 o'clock at night. So it was essentially worthless. Like all the <laughs> gift cards were sold out. I was like, thanks a lot, man. This is a great life hack. Two years ago, it was even better. Target had a $20 gift card if you bought $100 on Apple. And there was no limit. So now they limit your online account. You have to go in-store. And if you go in-store, there's a lot of gift card scams that you have to be aware of and watch out for. Like if the gift card looks like it's been resealed or if it's been scratched off or anything that's a dead giveaway that someone's stolen the number already look at chris wow. protecting the world yep and other than that i'm actually looking for a microphone uh, preamp so the mic i use it sounds good but i actually clean it up in post and if i had a preamp on my mic i wouldn't have to do so much cleanup in post and it's better for things like live streaming. So I'll keep an eye out and see if that goes on sale. So if there are any people out there that want to sponsor our show, we'd be glad to take some money in so we could all buy preamps for our setups here. At home. <laughs> Maybe that will fix Glenn's audio issues. It would be worth it. Yes. <laughs> Boom. That's why we're suffering. <laughs> Freaking, you guys, yeah. again, the viewing public can't see this, but doesn't Glenn look like a little baby Yoda right now? Yeah. I'm gonna screen grab it and then I'll post it up on the Instagram. I've got account. the ears. I've got the ears somewhere inside the house. The baby Yoda ears. My wife bought them for th uh, for Halloween for us. Hey, look, he looks extremely warm and comfortable. That's for sure. I'm very comfortable, seeing that it's like 62 degrees in my house. Yeah, it's perfect. So there, I I even debate saying this because I don't want to be like polarizing, but. In the effort of just being me. <laughs> you not, po hold on, you not polarizing? <laughs> Come on, Brian. Demonetization. Thing <laughs> Deech, say it ain't so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know. So the, the one thing I might try this year, um, it's, a, it's always twofold. So there's like this place where my wife always goes to get like facials and like beauty stuff. And they always do like some type of bundle saving. And it's worth it, right? Because that stuff is expensive. Um, but outside of that, I'm actually going to try to hit up one of the, the local gun stores and see if they have anything cool and actually worth it on sale. Cause you go there and nothing's ever on sale. So it'd be kind of cool to be able to pick up maybe some accessories or some more ammunition or something like that, at, you know, at a savings. We'll see what happens. I'll let you guys know. Yeah. The margins are pretty thin, so that's the time to get it. And stuff should hopefully be back in stock now that the pandemic has been officially been declared over. Oh, yeah, it was up over Is there not too long ago. There was like any, any type of ammunition you wanted, it was there. And it wasn't as crazy as it was pre. Uh, fun fact, I tried to buy some like 9 mil and send it to a friend in California. And then I realized that is not That's legal. That's a big no-no. Do not do that. <laughs> do not do that. Shout out you can to send a knife. 
to the person uh, at the uh, the mailboxes express for warning me that I was about to break the law. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't do that. Just kidding. You can, we didn't you, can mail the, you can mail. You can mail knives are okay. You can send knives. That you can. That's still legal here. What about yeah. what about out the front knife? No, no. Spring uh, assist out the front. Down. No. Okay. What if you hold it upside down? It's out the back. Mm, technicality. <laughs> Spring assist not allowed. That's, oh, that's okay. right. That's right. And the boy could dream. Actually, I think there is. I remember in college there was a girl that I knew, and she walked around with a switchblade. And I think the switchblade is legal in California as long as the blade is like under an inch or something. And she just always carried it around. She whipped it out. She thought it was funny to like intimidate guys with it. <laughs> What are you going to do with an inch blade? <laughs> better, better than your fist, I'll tell you that. I'd rather have that than your fist. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, we continue to get great comments about our dad joke of the week. Dad joke of the week. This week, Brian's up. Yeah, thank you. So I, I went drag racing the other day. Running in hills is brutal. Nice. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Look, I don't think Chris gets it. Yeah, that went way over my head. <laughs> like cross dressing drag. Drag. Like drag. Drag racing, like running, and then I'm in hills. You it's imagine the one time I got I it and Chris hills. did it. That's because oh. Brian slurs and mumbles it? all the time. It's that Arizona accent. It's that Phoenix accent. It is. I, I heard hills. Like, so drag hills racing is the hill same thing, thing, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. Thanks, Glenn. Let me make a you little heart it. emoji for you. There, That's you get reaction. the wah, 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 wah. There it is. <laughs> I'm sure it'll make more sense in post after I clean things up. Well, the good news is we just take a topic and run it into the ground to where no one understands it. And welcome to the Pep Gag right. Podcast. Yeah. That's right. All right. To wrap things up, the FTX saga gets weirder by the day. The 2022 World Cup is going on, and none of us care. People are stealing Kia and Hyundai cars with ease and doing dangerous stunts in them. Cryptocurrency platforms may implement a 5% or $5 million bug bounty program to save itself. The Red Cross goes digital, and don't click on Brian's wish list link. That's all I have for this week. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. You can find us all on LinkedIn. Links will be in the description. Follow us on Instagram at Petcac Podcast, and you'll be able to see Glenn as Baby Yoda on there. Thank you to all our listeners and subscribers who rate us five stars in the iTunes store and Spotify and left us a review. We appreciate you all spreading the word to help grow the show. The best way to find us is to search for the Petcac Podcast on your favorite podcast listening app. My co host Brian Deach and Glenn Medina, I'm Chris Louie. Thanks for listening. We'll see you all next weekend. As always, have a nice day. Toodles. Gobble, gobble. <laughs> gobble, gobble.